All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with some introductions as more people keep jumping into this panel session. Um, so hello, everybody, and welcome to our UC San Diego uh, student panel. We're really excited to have you all joining us today to hear about the student experience at UC San Diego. My name is Lindsay Folkman Tran. I'm the Assistant Director of International Admissions at UC San Diego. I'm going to have my colleague um, introduce himself. So Aaron. Hi, after everyone. Good, good evening to you. My name is Aaron Brown, and I'm an Associate Director for Application Review. Thanks, Aaron. So um, Aaron and I will be on the presentation today and are able to answer admissions questions. Um, the plan for today is that we will cover, um, we're going to do a real quick video of why you see San Diego to give you an overview of what the campus looks like. It's about one minute long. So it gives a great overview of UC San Diego. And then we're going to go right into our student panel, where our panelists are going to answer all the questions that you have. We encourage you to submit those questions using the Q&A feature in Zoom webinar. So go ahead and use that box and submit any questions you want our student panelists to talk about today. Um, and then at the end of the presentation today, Aaron will do a brief admissions overview to give you some information about UC San Diego's admission process and we can answer any of those types of questions. So if you submit any of those now, Aaron and I are happy to answer those throughout the presentation or you can address them at the end um, during the admissions overview. So what we're going to do now is hopefully show you a real quick video. Um, depending on your internet connection, I hope that the video uh, shows well on your computers, but let's give it a go and we'll see what it looks like. So thank you all again for joining us and we're going to watch this video real quick. watching that video with us. What we're going to do now is we're going to move straight into the student panel and hopefully the video gave you at least an overview of what UC San Diego looks like and some fast facts about the university um, so that you could learn a little more. So um, what we're going to do is start with some introductions of our student panelists. So we're just going to go in the order you see on the screen here. Um, so if each of you would like to kind of introduce yourself, your major, uh, maybe one fun shout out to the university, something you have, and then if you want to kind of share maybe where you're from or anything that you think would, would resonate with our group today, feel free to do that. So we will go ahead and start with our first panelist. Um, hi, I'm Shagun. And um, a clinical psych major and a dance minor. And um, I'm from Gurgaon in India, which is where I am right now. Um, <laughs> and I'm in ERC. Um, one shout out that I would like to give on campus would definitely be ERC. Because even though it's kind of far, <laughs> it's beautiful. And I cannot imagine. Um, living anywhere other than ERC. So consider me biased. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Ananya and I'm a biochemistry major from Revel. So I'm a second year and I'm in Mumbai right now. And I think one sh shout out for me would definitely be Scripps because I think it's one of the most gorgeous parts of campus and I just love the beach and the fact that my campus is basically on the ocean is like perfect. So, yeah. 
Hi, my name is Mahika. I'm a molecular and cell bio major and I'm minoring in philosophy and I'm also from Mumbai where I am currently right now. Um, and my favorite place on campus, actually, um, I would like to agree with Shagun. <laughs> ERC is probably one of my favorite places. It's, it's so big, so green and just um, everything about it. Um, I love everything about it. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Ayushi. I am a fourth year clinical psychology major minoring in international studies and I'm in near college. And in contrast to what Shagun and Mahika are saying, I think near is obviously the best college. <laughs> so I'm going to shout out near college, especially mom, which is the middle of near. There's a little coffee shop there and it makes it they have the coolest seasonal stuff. Hi everyone, how's it going? My name is Kevin. I'm a third year chemical engineering major with a chemistry minor from Warren College. And obviously I'm gonna say Warren College is the best. That's already a given, but a little shout out I like to do. You can kind of see it in my uh, Zoom background here, but this is our beautiful uh, library, Geisel Library that you can see behind me. We can go and talk a little bit about it later, but that's one of my favorite spots on campus. Great, thank you all so much for the introduction. Um, I encourage anyone that's attending and has questions, go ahead and submit them um, in the Q&A box. And we are happy to present those questions to our panelists today so that they can answer the questions that you have. Um, my first question that a lot of folks have um, and has come up in the past is, did you live on campus and, or do you or did you live on campus? What was it like? What are the residential halls like, the dining halls? Would anyone like to take that one? Um, sure, I can go ahead. Um, so I lived in um, the I house on campus, which is clearly the best place to live on campus. Uh, <laughs> it has amazing events. It was honestly just the experience of living on campus with um, people around and then um, the week zero events happening all around was amazing. It's I cannot even explain how how big it impacted me in a way socially and just like adjusting on campus. So I loved living there. Plus, um, I was super close to the Blacks Beach and we have amazing views from the eye house and the village market has my heart. So I'm definitely biased about that, but um, living on campus was amazing for me and I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I can also talk about how living on campus was for me. So I'm from Ravel and my dorms were basically just opposite the Ravel market, which is Rogers. And it has the best coffee on campus. And I am not even being biased. My friends from ERC can agree. But uh, basically, I think living on campus was great because everything is just so convenient and easy. Like even for me, because I'm a STEM major and most of the STEM classes happened in Ravel, I found it really convenient to go to and fro from my classes. And even if my schedule had some breaks in the middle, I found that like I could go back to my room, sit, study for a while. And because we had like, Revel itself has like two, three dining halls, one of them being like a little restaurant, which is really nice. So yeah, I think living on campus is great. I can also add, add to that a little bit. I think it's, it's very helpful when you're living with people that are kind of doing the same thing that you're doing. So everyone else there is also a student. Everyone's going through the same stuff that you are. So it's really nice finding your community, especially when you're split up into colleges. I think that just helps make you feel more at home because it feels like a little city. You, you come back to your home and then you're going and visiting different places. You're going to class, you're going to work. So it's, it's a great experience. What about if we each talk a little bit about the college system? I mean, something that maybe you like about the college system, what you think makes UC San Diego unique with the colleges. Uh, would anyone like to go ahead and share about that? I could start. Um, 
So I'm from ERC, which um, is kind of uh, our focus is mostly on like a global community and our GEs are um, MMW, which is making of the modern world. It's a five quarter sequence. And um, yeah, so you see San Diego is now, I mean, it used to be six colleges that we were split up into and now it's seven with the newest edition being seventh college. And I really like it because again, I think it's so awesome that we can kind of, it's kind of like Hogwarts. I mean, you kind of fight about which college is the best one. You go from one college to another, you compare dining halls, cafes, everything. And you also compete um, on which GE requirement is the worst. Um, right now it's a tie between Ravel and ERC, but it's it's a lot of fun, the GEs. Um, definitely, um, it's nice doing something out of your major scope. So I like that. And I also like that each college is kind of a tiny community, like again, a house. So you kind of bond with people from the same college, um, about things from the same college. I really like that. Yeah, I think Mahika did a really good job of kind of explaining how it's like a little family system. I think UC San Diego has a lot of benefits. It's really unique in that it has the college system and it, Hogwarts is a really good way to describe it. Um, I would say the benefits of it are definitely extensive as well. Um, it's almost like you kind of get your, your small liberal arts college feel, right? When you come into college, you know, you're not going into this huge research university that's over 30,000 students large and you just feel like a small little fish you're going in you have your your family you live with people from your colleges you kind of get that close-knit feel while still having access to like all of the benefits that um, UC San Diego has like you saw in the video we have over a billion dollars in, in annual research funding we have some of like the top professors and faculty in the world and yet it doesn't feel like we're just we're just thrown into the mix and like we're kind of on our own so that's definitely one of the the benefits I would say of the college system. Um, another thing, sorry uh, um, another thing that I would like to add would be that each colleges have their own orgs so it's um, easier to participate and be a part of those orgs and like take up responsibility and leadership positions if you want to. Like for ERC, we have um, the SORC and then we have r and and these different orgs for every college. I'm not sure about the other colleges, um, like the specific orgs, but all of us have orgs so that it's easier to just know people from the same college and then be involved in the college um, as well and like take up roles if you want to. Um, also like adding on to the GEs, I think it's really nice that like you can basically in your application, you can rank the colleges according to what you would like to have first and last. And the thing to note about the colleges, I think is that they all focus on different things. So at least if I can speak for Ravel, we focus a lot on like, like Mahika said, like holistic learning. So it's like humanities, natural sciences. It's a little bit of everything basically. So you can look at the general requirements of all the colleges and you can see what you would like to study more or what you would be more interested in. And I feel like that's a big plus point. Like at least as a STEM major, I wouldn't have seen myself take five humanities classes but I think I really enjoy that so that's something to just think of. That's great advice and I know that um, in the question somebody asked about like how do you decide how to rank them like if you are a biology student and you, you want to go pre-med but you also love you know writing what what should they be looking at as they're trying to rank the colleges? Did you have something that you looked at when you ranked them? Did you just randomly do it? Do you have recommendations? Um, so I can I think I can answer this question well because I'm also I am a biochemistry major currently, but I'm looking at changing to a pure bio major. And if you are saying that you really enjoy creative writing, I think Ravel is definitely like something you should look at up there and I would also say ERC because they have MMW so especially I mean I can tell you what I know about ERC and Revel, but I feel like both ERC and Revel have these classes that are these five courses so for us it's humanities so you read different books you write essays on them 
and it's basically things like that and for mnw i think either mahika or shagun could tell you more about it but i definitely think that if you're looking at bio uh, revel is definitely a college you should look at I kind of wanted to add on to that. Uh, for me, I didn't pick my college based on my major and minor and my interests. In hindsight, maybe I should have, but I think food's very important to me. And as someone who is very veg, who is vegetarian, I <laughs> picked it based on the dining halls available. And Mir used to have a all vegan, all vegetarian dining hall, and that's why I picked. Um, mirror. And then I realized it has some of the most lenient GEs, which was great. If you're not into math, if you're not big on math, you can take mirror and um, choose not math instead. <laughs> choose maybe astrology or a science to do. Yeah, and then I think it's important to note, I think um, all of our panelists did a really good job at, at answering and kind of going more in depth on like the specific GEs of their college. So I won't, I won't bother you with that. But it's important to note that any major can can go for any college, You're, you don't have to, to pick a college on major, the really the only thing you are looking for is its philosophies, like we mentioned, or its general education sequence. Um, and those are kind of the, the key important factors there. For me, chemical engineering is, is the major that I chose. And there's chemical engineers across the, the seven colleges. Like it's not like all the, all the engineers are secluded into a certain college. So you're really open to kind of um, not just selecting a college based on major, but really kind of choosing what philosophy you want to pursue like in, in college. Cause it's more than just the major itself. You really want to, you want to have like a, a life outside of the book. So it's really, that's kind of a, a good way that we give our students the choice to kind of shape the way um, they want to make of their, of their college experience. So yeah, I just want to quickly throw that in. Um, another thing that, um, so I wanted to add on more to MMW. Um, MMW is basically making of the modern world. And then we go on and um, study about how the modern world came to be in five long courses. <laughs> and then we write about that um, and just about the world. And we write essays about anything we want to related to the world, about um, the things that we studied in that quarter. So it's more history related. If that's something that you would be into, you should definitely check it out. Um, another thing that you might want to consider when choosing colleges would be the distance. Uh, if you like walking, you should take ERC or Revell. If you do not, maybe try Warren because UCSD is huge and walking is hard. And I'm not a fan of walking. Um, but also um, gyms as well. So ERC has um, a ERC has a gym there, and then the main gyms in Jabal. Um, so if you are really into gymming, you should check out the gyms in proximity with that as well. Does anyone get around campus on like a bike or skateboard or take the shuttles or anything? No one take the shuttles, but <laughs> but I I mean you have to get up early for the shuttles. Like if you have a class in ten minutes, it's easier to walk rather than like wait ten minutes for the shuttle to come and then get late. But like the shuttles also have like a proper schedule, and I think they come every fifteen minutes or something like that. So keeping that handy is always helpful because sometimes when you're too tired to walk, it's pretty convenient. I actually live off campus now. And back when um, we were in person, I used to always take the bus um, to campus. You do have access with your student fees to the MTS bus system that pretty much takes you all around the greater San Diego area. So it's super easy to, to hop on a bus, get to campus. And then I usually would carry a skateboard in it. For me, it just was a little bit, it was a little bit easier than than walking around. But it's definitely, it's definitely doable. I would say if you if you plan out your schedule, you can get to um, wherever you are on campus, whatever class you have within maybe ten or so minutes. So it's it's not too too crazy. But yeah, we are we are a huge campus, a lot of acres. So definitely, definitely, um, it's ups and downs. <laughs> 
All right, so there was also a question um, submitted particularly about like research opportunities. So I was wondering if anyone has had opportunities in research or explored what those opportunities could look like. And there was a question specifically about biochemistry, if anyone knows about any uh, research opportunities that have existed there, whether for you or folks that you know on campus? Um, so at least for biochemistry, I mean, I'm just starting out as a second year, but I know of a lot of friends who pursued a lot of biochemistry research. And I feel like especially on campus, it's very easy to get involved. Like uh, I was a part of like this biochemistry seminar in the first year and I think that seminar was so helpful because it just focused on research opportunities and like basically it was literally a two credit class designed to help biochemistry majors find more opportunities so I think you just it's as simple as like getting in touch with a professor or someone who you know is conducting interesting research and like a lot of people have said there are lots of organizations on campus so there's like the bssa which is the biological students association basically all these organizations help you network with people find people that are interested in research and uh, someone also said something about how easy it is for international students to find research opportunities and we also have like this page um not a page, this app called Handshake, which is super helpful. It tells you about all the jobs and internships available on campus. So it's literally like a click away. To kind of add on to that, UCSD is a research university. So most professors, affiliates, et cetera, et cetera, do have their own research going on. And they're always looking for more help, more volunteers. I'm a psych major and currently I work at the Veterans Associate Hospital in the neuro, in the neuro imaging lab where we look at um, PTSD, so post-traumatic stress disorder and fMRIs and other neuroimaging techniques. And the way I got that was like um, Ananya said, going to Handshake, going to Real Portal, talking to professors, going to office hours, being like, what, what's your research? What are you interested in? Do you need help maybe? <laughs> Can I help you out? Sending emails. I've sent so many emails for that one research position. It's There's a lot of students that are looking for a research position. So you have to put yourself out there. You have to get in contact, network, but it's definitely possible. And it's not, it's no different uh, for an international student to get a research position or to look for a research position than it is for a domestic student. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, you can also um, take up lab classes. We have those, you might have two for GEC or for G's. Um, and then you can also do independent research as well. There are so many opportunities. You can join clubs on um, campus. I am in the site club myself. And then they um, give out internships and research. I mean, they, pro like, they provide you with the information about them. And then you can like reach out to them. And there are so many committees um, in the club itself that can help you work on your own research. So you can do independent research as well. Um, and you get credits for it if you um, talk to your advisors and then uh, there there's a thing called psych 199 where you do independent research so you'll get credits for your time that you spend on your own research so um that's also an option on campus there's also like certain Oh, sorry. Just very quickly, there's also research um, scholarships. So if you're doing research, you can apply for funding, even as an undergrad student. Just quick note, like, um, like all of them said, there are enough opportunities. You just have to like take the initiative. So mailing is very important. Going to these events is very important. But yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with Ayushi. There's no difference between, um, they don't look at international students any differently than students from there. So that's um, definitely not something uh, you should worry too much about. Um, someone's asked how they should decide which college they're going to if they're going undecided so I think like the others said your major doesn't really like the different colleges don't really play an effect in choosing like 
which college you should choose so i think definitely you should read about the different missions and philosophies of the college like the rest of the panelists said and i think like ayushi said it's actually a great idea to look at the dining halls and this might seem a little silly but especially if you're going to be on campus for the first two years you should also see what major you're like maybe bending towards and maybe thinking of choosing because then that way you can see what classes are where so at least proximity wise it'll be easier if you choose a college that has the dining hall and the classes of your choice nearby um another question i see would be how would you categorize the student community at ucsd um honestly there's only one word that comes to me that would be flexible the student community at UCSD is super flexible. Um, there's so much that you can do and it's it's an open space. We have orgs for everything. We have orgs for gaming if you want. We have orgs for different um, majors. We have orgs. We have the SFL community if you want to be social. We have sports clubs as well. So it's on. we have everything. It's just honestly what you're looking for. So it's super flexible. You can be part of um, your student council in the college. You can be part of um, the AS as well, which is the Associated Students, which is um, an overall student body if you're into politics. And then you can be part of your major. It's honestly on what you want. So we're super flexible. It's what you make of it, like Shagun said. You can, if you don't like being involved socially, you could look for academic clubs. If you're someone who prefers more making friends in classes, you can go ahead and do that. There's there's people of all in all sorts of walks of life and you're one of them. So just be free. <laughs> Yeah, they're also very nice. Um, so, you know, if you're a little conscious at first and nervous about how people are, um, I assure you everyone I've met till now on campus has been so nice, so sweet, so uh, considerate and accommodating. So yeah, definitely flexible and nice. Now that's such a common question that comes up from students. Like what's one sentence you would use to describe students at UC San Diego? So thank you all for sharing that. Um, I know we have a question too about knowing more about engineering. And I know we have one engineering major on our panel today. Could you talk a little bit about the experience as an engineering major at UC San Diego? Yeah, absolutely. So my story is actually a little bit different. I didn't apply as a chemical engineering major. I actually applied as a biochemistry major and then took a series of prereq courses when I decided I wanted to, to switch into chemical engineering and was able to, to fill out the application and get in. Um, so it is something that's possible. Again, it's not guaranteed, but that's kind of how, how my path was. In terms of the, of the actual like engineering programs themselves. Obviously, it's going to vary a little bit, whether you're a chemical engineer, a structural engineer, a computer science um, engineer. But essentially, what you can expect is you have your your like your lower division classes, your math sequences, your physics. For me, I had to take a chem sequence. Um, but for most engineers, it's really that physics and that math that is kind of what you're going to be start starting out with while at UC San Diego. And as you work your way up, you're gonna start getting into your core engineering classes. For me, that's a title called SENG, which is um, the department tag for chemical engineering for other people or for other programs, it's a different tag. And that's when you're really going in, you're learning the material that's applicable to what you wanna do as, uh, what you wanna do as a career. And those are your core classes um, that are necessary for when you decide to work in industry. Along with that, you do have broader types of um, of applications more and more so you can categorize them as general engineering classes whether that's a coding class or like a um, a data analysis class just things you can use within your core classes to better be prepared for when you enter the workforce um, along with that you'll also be taking your general education sequences side by side so for me i was actually able to take a sequence of humanities classes as well as um, a economic we call them economics area study is what we call them in Warren. Um, and along with that, you also have opportunities to choose technical electives um, where you can choose classes um, of your choice 
and make sure that it's something that you can tailor those classes towards your, like what you want to do in your field again. So that's kind of like the general structure of engineering. You have your technical electives, you have your core general education classes, you have your core engineering classes, and then you have your like your building blocks of like physics and math classes. So that's okay. I know it's not the, the best description of the world because it's pretty, it's pretty general for all our majors um, or pretty specific rather for all our majors, but that's kind of typical for, uh, for a lot of our engineering degrees. Great, thank you. Um, so we did have a question. I think it's a kind of fun one. If you had to promote one club or organization you've been part of in UCSD, what would it be and why? Um, so as I said, I um, am a part of the SFL community, which is the um, sorority fraternity life. And it was I wasn't planning to be a part of it, but um, I rushed last year just for fun and to um, kind of take that off my bucket list. <laughs> um, I think that's definitely one community I would promote because it's it's so social. We have so many events, we have so many philanthropic events and you get to meet so many people on campus. Um, plus you get to do anything you want. Like you can have study hours in Geisel, you can um, you can bond with each other over coffee. You have those big little relationships in sororities um, and in fraternities as well. So I feel like that's something that's definitely open and out there. And if you want to put yourselves out there um, socially, I think this is a good one and you can always rush. Yeah, I can add to that. So I just, it's so difficult to pick a club, an org, an organization, because there's so many. There's one for everything. You like watching movies? There's a cinephiles org on campus. You like DJing? You like music? We have a radio station. There's so many different things. For me, I really like TED Talks coming into UCSD, and I saw that they had a TEDx UCSD. That was one of the reasons I picked UCS, UC San Diego as a college. And so as a university, and so I was very lucky to be able to volunteer and help out my first year. And then I continue to just be part of the TEDx UC, UC San Diego organization. And it's just so fun. I get to meet people who have the same interests as me, people from different walks of life, but they like TED Talks and I like TED Talks and we're, we're friends now. It's just, it's a great community to be a part of. Also, I kind of wanted to give a shout out to the um, Rock and Roosevelt org. They organized this Rock and Roosevelt concert. Um, it's an ERC org, so, <laughs> but it's amazing and it's super cool. And we just um, hang out and then we talk about music and artists that you might want to see and that everyone might want to see. And it's amazing. It's you, you don't even have to do anything. You just hang out, you bond, and then we get to meet the artists as well. So that's definitely a plus. Right. So um, another question that came up is if someone would be willing to describe their student housing. So what was it actually like? Like what were the residential halls like that you lived in on campus? Anyone want to talk about that? I could start. Um, so I lived in the ERC um, dorms. So that's kind of different than what Shagun lived, at, uh, lived in. Um, and ERC, we, um, we had different halls according to like continents. So that was pretty awesome. Like you would be like, no, Europe hall is better. No, Asia hall is better. So, and each hall had a team. So again, a lot of fun stuff happening and um each floor has two suites so one is for boys one is for girls and we had 15 people in our suite uh so about wait oh yeah four four triples and two singles so i lived in a triple room so i had two roommates and um the dorms are actually not that bad. They're pretty, like the room is pretty big. So you kind of get your own spot, you get your own desk, your bed. I had the lower bunk. So although it was a little different 
sleeping on a bunk. It was definitely an experience. I'm glad I had that. Um, and you have a shared suite bathroom. So um, enough showers, enough, you know, space for you to kind of get your thing done without um, waiting in line or whatever. And just um, the dorm experience was awesome because um, you really may like form connections with your suite mates and your roommates. And that's definitely something I'm very glad I had. Um, I'm, I had awesome roommates and um, definitely check out the dorm experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, I completely agree with Mahika. So I was in Ravel, but we had like a similar system. So I was also in the dorms. And Ravel has like two types of dorms. One of them are like the fleets, which are basically the older dorms. And then there are like these two other buildings that are like the new buildings. So I was a part of the fleets. And basically, we had like a suite system again, we had 15 people and like, five rooms which were all triples so I had two roommates but I feel like even though I mean going in I'm sure some people are a little like nervous about like maybe you know having roommates and stuff but I feel like it's so great to have like two roommates because you make like amazing friends and also in general our suite was kind of like a little house in Ravel I feel so I was super close to most of my sweet mates by the end of it we'd like cook together there's like a nice area which has like a sofa and you can decorate it and it has like a little dining table so we got ourselves like a sweet tv so we'd like sometimes watch things watch things together and yeah, and like she said, even like the bathrooms, everything is super spacious. You don't, I never really had a time where I wanted to go to the shower and like, I'd have to like wait in line, like normal college experiences. But I think it's really spacious. And yeah, it was great living in the dorms. Yeah, Ananya and Mahika really tick all the boxes. We had a sweet fish and we would take turns um, feeding it. We had a little chart um you're actually allowed underwater animals only so nothing that's um as a pet in the dorms nothing that's outside of the that lives outside of the water so that's why we had a fish we had three over the course of a year and we had to bury one we flushed one and we dissected one <laughs> it was very fun um but yeah it's it's a great experience living in the dorms. I think my two, I lived in a triple my first year and they are, my two roommates are my best friends to this day. And I'm a fourth year. I don't live in the college dorms anymore. Okay, so to add on to that, um, I initially lived in a single in ERC at the ERC apartment. So we have apartments as well um they're they're more spacey if you don't want to live in the dorms and we have um and living in a single was actually pretty fun for me because I didn't have like a really good experience with my roommates uh with my suit mates sorry um but yeah and then I lived a couple of months in the I house um in the I house anyone can apply actually uh it doesn't matter what what college you are in um, and we have four singles in the house in one apartment. There are four singles and one bath and um, one toilet. So that's super spacey. And if you are someone that likes their privacy, but also want to live together and then want to experience the aspect of um, living with people, you can definitely check out the apartments because they're really good. Plus, I house has amazing amazing living conditions and events and it's super spacey so definitely apply for iHouse if you want but just a heads up you're gonna have to write three essays so get ready for that <laughs> and can you just clarify what iHouse stands for just so those attending now oh yeah it stands for the international house um so you get to meet people from all over the world and that's that's such a serial experience and the events are amazing and then you get to know so much about different cultures and just um tell people about yours as well so that's always amazing and it was an amazing experience 
Um, I want to skip to the next question. What is the weather like throughout the year? So they said they have a slight allergy to the cold and the dust, but does anyone want to talk about the weather in UC San Diego? Yeah, sure. I think all of us were so excited to take this question and like everyone was just smiling at the screen because San Diego has the best weather. I don't think any of us can complain. It's really nice all year round. I think there's probably just like 10, 15 days where it rains a little, but that too, not too much. Like it's just like random rain. And I feel like the weather is just perfect. Like it's never too cold. Like I don't think it's ever cold. You can go to the beach almost any day of the year, which is saying a lot. Um, it's not too hot either. It's just like perfect weather. You can like, I think maximum a hoodie and you're good to just like walk around and be wherever you want. But I, I think it's safe to say that San Diego has perfect weather, yeah. And then we did have a question just about like competitiveness of courses. And I know this is a question that comes up often from prospective students. Like what is the atmosphere like for students in classes and for different opportunities on campus? Does it feel really competitive or what is it like? Um, so I think the person asked specifically for pre-med and I did like I did pick pre-med as my option when I got in, um, although I was never really sure of it. So I can tell you that pre-med is not really competitive. I mean, it's it's not a program. It's um, it just kind of dictates what classes you have to take to kind of give your um, MCAT and like um, basically go to med school. So I wouldn't say pre-med is has been competitive till now. Um, you have to work hard, but I think that goes for almost any track you're on, doesn't matter what you're doing. Um, and pre-med does add a few classes, more than your major classes, so like two, three classes, just so that you're prepared for your exam. But it's not, I wouldn't call it competitive. I would call it, um, you do have to work hard, but again, that goes for almost any um, area you're interested in. Yeah. yeah, and then just last touching point, I, that kind of goes back to the question about like what adjectives we'd use to describe UC San Diego. I would say collaborative is definitely on that list. Like, yeah, you're, you're surrounded by some of the smartest students, smartest faculty in the world, but it's not like you see in movies. It's not like this super cutthroat, I'm going to make it to the top environment. It's I've, I've never had any issues with people wanting to work together, to study together. Um, to share what they got, their study materials, lecture notes. It's really, it's really not an issue. It's super collaborative. And honestly, everybody, everybody wants the next person and their, their friends to succeed just as much as themselves. So that's kind of one thing that's super nice about UC San Diego. And I know it's probably not like that everywhere, but here it, it certainly is. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so one question I want to ask is, does anyone have like a favorite community event that you've enjoyed the most or a student event that happens that you look forward to? Me. I saw Mamma Mia at URC last fall, and then we usually have movie nights at URC so much, so that was amazing. I love that. Plus, we had bonfire at our house. So a bonfire at San Diego Beach is amazing. I definitely recommend 10 on 10. So um, my favorite event would have to be Need the Beach. It was like this event we had in um, like week zero. So it was literally like just everyone on campus on the beach and they got like, these, they got us these cute customized UCSD towels and like sunscreen and it was like a perfect event and also one of the week zero events again was in Revel. I can't really remember the exact name of the event but they literally got a whole Ferris wheel into our campus and it was really great like they had like a lot of small games and it was like a fun fair but yeah basically that. Also sorry I just wanted to add for you all as well because for you all was amazing it I definitely recommend that. It's super good, definitely. Plus, ISPO has amazing events too. They had an ice cream social. So ISPO events are really good. Plus you get to meet a lot of international students and out of state students. So you kind of meet people who are in the same boat as well. 
Yeah, so ISPO is the International Students and Programs Office, which is what us international students are directly in contact with when we come to UCSD, UC San Diego. But yeah, I think everyone enjoys week zero events so much because they're like your first taste to UC San Diego and how amazing, how um, collaborative, as Kevin said, UC San Diego really is. I also really wanna highlight fall y'all because I got to meet some of the coolest artists there. I just, I'd love these artists for so long and then they came and I was able to see them. It was a surreal experience. Yeah, and UC, UC San Diego has a lot of events that give you a lot of free things. So what I mean by that is a lot of events where you get a lot of free food. You can even sometimes try different cuisines. Like I had bubble tea boba for the first time. It was magical. I got my first um, taste of being a plant parent. I, I found I, got, I was able to adopt a succulent. I was um, like Mahika said, um, the meet the beach event gives you free towels. There's just so many things you can collect and learn from all these events just last thing i want to add is like all these events are awesome the first week the week zero actually is amazing but even throughout the quarter you have like small small events happening so since i'm from erc each hall has their own events and i think my favorite event was um during um fall quarter last year towards the end of it we had this kind of small christmas Christmassy um, event where we had where we painted our own mugs and made hot cocoa, and it was just so sweet, so cute, and there were like fifteen people, but it was still so much fun. Yeah. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Plus, we have festival events as well at UCSC. I just wanted to highlight that. Um, especially with Diwali and Holi, we have events at UCSD for that. So it, it, they're really good. And so real quick, does anyone want to share what they do on the weekend? What do you do in San Diego on the weekend? Personally, I love leaving the UC San Diego area and um, UC San Diego has a lot of shuttles that take you to um, different grocery stores, different areas around San Diego. I was able to explore the beach, although technically that's on campus, but <laughs> I was able to explore Old Town, um, different areas in San Diego, find different places. Um, there's this one street that has a lot of Asian food and I, despite being from India, I was able to explore so many different foods, so many different cultures, so many, so much diversity. And I think that's what I spend most of my weekend doing is leaving the UC San Diego campus. <laughs> you can go ahead. Uh, yeah, that's the one of the problems with uh, doing it virtual. But you know who we make we make do. But yeah, I don't really have a complex answer for me. It's it's the beach. You saw it in the, the opening video. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I actually got into surfing. Um, I say got into, I'm not that good. Um, so I sometimes will do that on the weekends. Um, but yeah, that, that's all I got. I would say beach, it's number, number one for me. <laughs> so yeah, I want to ask, oh, yeah, go ahead. I, no, oh, it's fine. <laughs> you, oh, I'm just gonna ask one last question. So if you wanna answer this one first and then we'll ask one last question. No, but I was just gonna say that I completely agree. And I also think that UCSD is, in La Jolla, which is like this beautiful area and it has like a really nice cove. So on the weekends, at least my friends and I, even if we had like a lot of work to do, we would like kind of find time, even if it's just to like get a coffee because the whole stretch is so beautiful. So just to even like walk around, if you don't have enough time to like spend too much time on the beach, we'd also do like these bonfires on the cove and it's basically perfect, yeah. All right, so I want to ask one last question for everybody, um, just kind of either parting words for the folks that have joined us today, or maybe just your best part of UC San Diego, like what's the best to you? So if everyone wants to kind of just share some parting words, their, their favorite thing um, to wrap this up today. Um, 
Um, Go ahead. <laughs> for me, it's definitely how big the campus is. And I don't mean that in terms of, oh, I get to walk so much. It's just um, the fact that I get to meet so many different people who are doing different things, who are just unique in their own way. And, um, you know, the fact that each area of the campus is, again, like we discussed, a little different from the other. So it genuinely feels like you're going from one university to the other to the other and meeting so many people who all are amazing, sweet, um, definitely um, gives you a little more, um, I don't know how to say this, but it, there's a lot of variance. So um, definitely a great experience, the size of the campus. Um, I would kind of add on to that too, because I loved how coming at UCSD made me explore so much about others, but also about myself. I didn't know that I liked so many things. I mean, I got to eat pizuki, which is a pizza plus cookie. I, that's amazing. That, okay, that was, it's genuinely amazing. Plus the views are amazing. Um, UCSD in itself, has amazing views. It's beautiful. And we have the beach right there. And then we have a hike from the beach as well. You could just you could just walk down in 15 minutes and watch a sunset and a sunrise if you want. And that's that's generally amazing coming from a person who's lived in a city her whole life. So I I love that. Because there's just so much to explore about. And I love that it's open it's just open to so many possibilities you can you can find everything for everyone like it it has so many variations i definitely love that about ucsd um i also love that you can never get bored on campus like i don't think there would have been a day for me where i would have really thought to myself okay i have really nothing to do because there's always something going on like even if it's just like walking around campus or like the little events you would always see like we have right near Geisel which is our library we have the library walk which basically has so many stalls at all point of time so like I remember they had like these pop-up stores where they sold like stickers and jewelry they you have a lot of organizations that talk to you about them so I feel like you can always go somewhere and do something. Um, I don't think we brought this up, but our campus also has this uh, place called the Price Center, which has like all these restaurants in it, which is like Subway and like um, Starbucks. And it basically has like 10 to 15 restaurants of like all types of different types of food. So yeah, basically you can always go grab a meal and yeah, basically you're never bored on campus. Yeah, I can add to that a little bit. I think UCSD was a place where I was able to find my passions and pursue my passions. There's just so much diversity, as everyone said, and I just think being able to take make the most of the of the diversity will help you succeed at UCSD. All right, well, I wanna thank all of our panelists so much for joining us today. I hope that you've enjoyed hearing from all of them. Um, what we're gonna do next is just move into a very brief um, admissions overview. So if you have any questions um, about the admissions process, I welcome you to stay with us to learn more about what is required for admission to UC San Diego. So Aaron, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you, Lindsay. And thanks to all of our panelists. It was great hearing your experiences. Um, my section will not be as interesting, I'm sure, as yours, but uh, hopefully relevant uh, for the students who are looking at, at joining us uh, next fall or in two years at UC San Diego. Um, so first, just kind of a brief uh, kind of overview of the university. Um, so we're a large research university, which our panelists mentioned. There's over 30,000 undergraduate students. About two thirds of that student population at the undergraduate level enters their first year students. And about a third is transfer students from other um, community colleges in California, from community colleges, two-year schools around the United States, um, or other four-year schools. And it's a pretty diverse group of students as well. They come from 45 different states and over 100 different countries and regions throughout the world. And about 18% of our undergraduate students are international students or are from abroad. Uh, India 
that is actually our second most represented country um, in terms of international students. Um, what I'm showing you here. Okay, so now I'll talk a bit about the first year requirements and how that works. So kind of reviewing the first year minimum requirements for admission. We are a selective campus, so it's important that you exceed minimum requirements uh, so that you can become a more competitive applicant. We will, of course, talk about testing on a future slide, uh, a topic of concern for many students. Um, but the subject requirements are, that are listed kind of in terms of college prep courses, those are um, the ones that you must complete in high school to show kind of the broad ability to be successful in college. For the GPA, we're looking at uh, a weighted GPA using your marks from 10th and 11th grades. And so those are the only grades that are calculated into the GPA that we consider as part of the application review process. Because of the challenges of the pandemic, um, the University of California suspended our letter grade requirements for coursework taken during the spring or summer of so if your school gave out pass or credit grades, that is okay. Um, and we will be allowing that in the application process this year. Of course, we're looking closely at academic factors and we'll talk a bit more about kind of the international exams in a minute. Um, but we're all also looking very closely at the non-academic factors that you complete uh, in our kind of comprehensive review of your application to get to try and know as much as we can about you to make an informed decision on your application. So of course those academic factors are the rigor of your coursework and the grades that you've earned and we review you in the context of your school. Uh, so it's all about kind of how, what have you done given what's offered where you go to school. Uh, so it's not about competing about students from other schools in your city or down the street but um, around the world but what have you done at your high school. And then in terms of the non-academic factors we're looking at you know, personal qualities and achievements that you enter in your extracurricular and volunteer areas, including perhaps leadership or notable accomplishments. Um, also, again, understanding the impact that the last few months might have had on your ability to continue in some of those activities. And so we'll review you, of course, um, in that context. And also the personal insight questions, which is something that we receive a lot of questions about. And there are eight personal insight questions for you to choose from for first year applicants. You will answer four out of those eight. There's a 350 word maximum for each question and um, choose the four that you think are the most appropriate for you to respond to. Um, think of them really as an interview your opportunity to tell us in your words more about who you are um, and so that we can get to know again that all of that about you um, make it in your own voice um, what you've learned um, what uh, challenges you may have faced etc um, just make sure that you're, you're telling us um, versus showing us uh, 350 words doesn't give you a lot of space for descriptive uh, flowery language uh, setting the scene. Uh, so this isn't your, you know, kind of common app long 300 or 650 word essay. Um, so get, get right to the point, uh, like it was that you were doing an interview uh, and we were having that discussion in person. Okay, so exams with the SAT or the ACT. Um, this obviously is a year of transition uh, and uh, as you may know, there's kind of ongoing litigation regarding uh, UC's use of standardized tests for the fall 2021 cycle. Uh, we just want to say that at the end of the day, no one will be required to submit an SAT or ACT score for admission and applications will not be viewed negatively based on the lack of a score. Uh, testing has always been one of many factors considered in UC's review process, and that will be the case this year too. So basically, at the very least, we will be um, a test optional, and you will not be harmed if you are not able to submit a test. Um, stay tuned to uh, our website to see if that changes in terms of uh, the litigation. 
So for international requirements, right, and kind of things that we're looking at specifically for students applying from schools outside of the United States. Um, so first would be English proficiency. And unless the language of instruction at your school is in English, you will be required to present an English language proficiency exam. The minimum scores are listed here, and we must have your results from those exams by early January. So plan on taking it no later than December. Um, also, you note that Duolingo English test is offered as an option that is for fall 2021 only. External exams are also really critical for us to kind of gain an understanding of your um, kind of academic abilities outside of the classroom, especially in the context of students applying from many schools outside of the United States. So there is a section on the application where you will self-report um, those kinds of exams. So things like IB, GCSEs, uh, predicted A-levels, your class 10 or 12 exams, etc. So for those that you may have completed already, you'll give us the official completed ones. If available, you're welcome to submit uh, the predicted grades, but they're not required at the time of application. You do, of course, though, want to see which exams you're, you're planning on taking in whichever system it is um, that you are pursuing. And um, a common question that we get is, you know, what subjects do I need in order to qualify for a certain major, um, which is oftentimes the case at, say, UK universities, right, where there's very specific sets of or A-level uh, requirements for admission. That's not the case for us. Um, so there are no minimum subject requirements or specific subjects requirements for any of our majors. Um, it's just important that you, you know, indicate uh, you know, which program it is that you are following. And then we can kind of expect to see, okay, if you say that you're an IB diploma student, well, what are the exams that you're taking uh, in, your, in your grade 12 year? What's the breakdown of HL, SL, so that we can review your application in that appropriate context. And um, lastly, if you, you know, again, if you are reporting your exams, you don't have to do the predicted scores. If you don't have them, that's fine. Um, if you do have them, great. And if you are just kind of as an uh, aside for students who do well on AP, IB, HL, or A-level examinations, we actually do award college credit um, for those exams. Or meet certain prerequisite requirements, original education requirements, depending upon your college, etc. So these are very useful tools for you. In addition to us assessing your academic ability um, and kind of your readiness for success at UC San Diego, also can then help you in your degree once you're there. And there's kind of a bit about what the process looks like last year. Um, so we received just about 100,000 first year applications. Uh, so Lindsay and I had a lot of work to do in reading those applications. And we admitted about 38,000 students. So of course about a 38% admit rate. The slide here shows the middle 50% uh, ranges for GPA and test score. I'm just giving you a sense of what that would have looked like for um, kind of competitive students this past year. Uh, again, we are definitely test optional at the minimum for fall of 2021, fall of 2022, but those scores do kind of give you um, that range. And um, we also, basically most of what I've been discussing has been about first year admission. Um, but as I said at the very first slide, we do offer a path for transfer admission. So if you're interested in learning more about the transfer pathway, of course, feel free to visit our admission website to learn more about that. All right, so how do you apply? Um, so basically you use one UC application for all of the campuses. So you can apply to as few as one or as many as all nine of the UC campuses. Um, through that one UC application. And it is available now online if you're in grade 12 and applying for fall of 2021. And <clears throat> for the grade 11 students, if you're still with us, it will open next year for you in August. Uh, those applications can be submitted November 1st through the 30th. So not yet. Um, so you can just keep working on those PIQs a little bit longer, uh, but they're definitely by November 30th. And, um, you know, of course, we recommend that you apply 
broadly um, through the system, as well as looking at other you know, appropriate schools that are fits for you. Uh, application fee is seventy dollars per UC campus if you're a U.S. citizen, or eighty dollars per campus for uh, non. First year applicants will be notified of their admission decision by mid to late March. And then you uh, have basically through the uh, entire month of April to decide where you uh, will be attending and to commit by May 1st. Right, so that was a quick 10 minute overview of admissions. Uh, at this point, I'll turn it back to Lindsay about ways to connect with us moving forward. Great. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so I just want to mention a couple events that we have coming up. We have our fall showcase happening on November 7th. It is a great way to hear from faculty about research opportunities, hear about different majors and programs at UC San Diego. So feel free to check that out if it's something you're interested in learning more about. We also have additional Triton talks, which are our panels like this, where you can hear from different groups on campus. And so if you're interested, feel free to check those out. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, we also have a virtual campus tour. So if you want to see the campus a little bit better, uh, check out the virtual tour. We also offer a live virtual tour with some of our campus ambassadors who can talk to you about their student experience as they guide you in a virtual tour around campus. And then we have great social media as well. So check out our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We also have a great YouTube channel with a lot of different videos to check out on it. And last but not least, if you do have follow-up questions, you want some individual advising with us, we do have virtual advising appointments available and you can visit this link to set up an individual 20 minute appointment with an admissions officer to talk more about your individual specific situation. We also have two upcoming Q and A with admissions international specialists sessions coming up on October 28th and November 4th if you're interested in signing up for those and those will just be question and answer sessions with one of our international specialists from our admissions office and you can always email us at info international at ucsd.edu so I want to thank you all so much for joining us today and uh, listening to all of our student experiences that our students wanted to share with you I hope that you got a lot of information today and if not feel free to uh, tune in to one of those virtual advising appointments, the Q&A sessions, or send us an email. And we're happy to help you there. But thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to everyone that attended. Have a great evening or day wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much.